Now, for these drugs to act upon the body, they need to reach the brain. So they will go from the blood into the brain. And the brain is protected by a blood-brain barrier. So it is a layer of tightly packed cells that protect the brain by restricting the passage of substances from the bloodstream into the brain. It is mainly composed of lipids, which are non-polar hydrophobic molecules. So because it is mostly hydrophobic, it's not easily crossed by polar hydrophilic molecules. So for a drug to go from the blood into the brain, it must go through the blood-brain barrier and it must be largely hydrophobic so that it is soluble in that lipid layer. So the analgesic properties of opiates depend on their ability to move from the blood, where solubility is important, into the brain. And for this process, it's important that the molecule is largely hydrophobic to be able to cross this barrier. Now, the solubility of the opiates are determined by their chemical structures. So these structures will help us to know how soluble they are, how, how, how hydrophobic they are as well. Now, once in the brain, the opiates will attach to opioid receptors. When they attach to these receptors, they reduce the perception of the pain. So these receptors are those that will click in in this active constituent. So this active constituent, this part of the molecule, will click in the opioid receptors in the brain. Now the opiates can also produce drowsiness, confusion, nausea, constipation, and depending on the amount of the drug taken, it can also depress respiration. So these drugs are depressors. They, they are relaxers. So if you take too much of it, it depresses or it relaxes the body too much. That can stop respiration. Long-term use of opiates can cause addiction and tolerance, as mentioned before. Now, the presence of the amino and the 2-hydroxyl groups in morphine, as you can see here, the amino group is here, and the 2-hydroxyl groups. These groups cause the molecule to become polar. So, because it's polar, it's sufficiently soluble in the blood. However, the other parts of the molecules also contribute for its hydrophobic nature. So, overall, the molecule is soluble enough to, be, um, to dissolve in the blood, but it's also hydrophobic enough to cross the blood-brain barrier. Now, we can manipulate the drug by changing the structure and when we change the structure we can change the way it crosses the blood brain barrier so from morphine we can synthesize codeine and from morphine we can synthesize heroin codeine is 10 times less potent than morphine heroin is 10 times more potent than morphine so this is just because of alterations in the groups of those molecules. So if you look at codeine, codeine has an ether group rather than a hydroxyl group. And if you look at heroin, it has two ester groups in comparison of two hydroxyl groups. So this makes a difference in how the drug is going to react in the body.